If you've ever sat in front of a camera, you've probably felt the urge to tweak something, make some adjustments and make it better than the manufacturer gave it to you. I know this because I get to do this a lot. In this video, I'm doing exactly that on my Windows 11 computer. I'm going to show you some completely free apps that take your Windows 11 from okay to pretty good. And yes, I know I have a lot of Linux fanboys on this channel. In many ways, I am one too. Linus has been my love for a few years now, but then privacy aside, Windows is a very, very solid OS. So let me show you how these apps make it even better. First on my list is ShareX. It's a screenshot screenshotting tool, um, but then a lot of credit should go to Windows on the new updated snipping tool. You could do a simple snip, a screen recording, select a variety of snipping modes, or even set up delays. But compared to some comprehensive tools, it's it's still just the barest minimum. So my go-to is ShareX. First, it's got an insane range of capture modes. You could grab a specific window or capture a scrolling web page. And the screen recording options are way better than that of uh, what, whatever Windows offers, especially if you want to create um, GIFs directly or tweak your recording settings. But it doesn't stop there. ShareX also includes built-in annotations, editing tools, so I can highlight, I might blur or add text to images right away. And one of my favorite parts is the automation. You can set it to automatically upload your captures to the cloud services, ger generate shareable links, or even trigger actions like running a custom script. It's, it's really a powerhouse that does everything that the snipping tool sh should do, you know, and it does much more. On Windows 11, Microsoft Edge is a default PDF reader, but again, it's really, really very basic. You are able to highlight, add text using the text box feature, erase, zoom in, zoom out, and that is as far as it goes. The most comprehensive free alternative I recommend is PDF gear. And for a free tool, there is no PDF reader and editor that even come close. In fact, if you have any that comes close, please leave a comment be below. I would love to review it. With PDF gear, you get a full suite of tools. You can edit text directly within the PDF, merge your split documents, and even compress files to save space. It also includes features like annotations, e-signatures, and filling out forms. Plus, if you need to convert PDFs into other formats like Word or Excel, it's your go-to. Really, really very versatile. The interface is clean and intuitive, and I have done a comprehensive video on using PDF gear, so click on the card above to watch it. Next, we move on to Windows Backup. Windows 11 offers several backup options. One such option is, the, is syncing um, your files with OneDrive. Uh, this is effective, at least for folks that are okay with OneDrive. There's also a less known Windows file history option. While it may fail when your hard drive is corrupted, it's possible to store files in a separate external drive and this is quite efficient. The problem with this option is that by default, your file names cannot have more than 250 characters. So, the moment you exceed 250 characters, it automatically stops backing up your files. Uh, what you es expect is that it skips the specific file that has a longer character set, but no, it just automatically stops backing up your files. My free alternative is Cobian Reflector. Now, if you've used its predecessor, um, Cobian back Backup, you might be scared to try this because it's been known to be a little bit um, complex for the average Windows user. However, Cobian Reflector fixes these flaws. It provides you with a very user-friendly experience while still being incredibly powerful. So you can schedule backups, choose between incremental or differential backups, and even encrypt your data for extra security. What I love most is the flexibility. So you can back up your entire drives, specific folders, or even individual files to local storage or network drives. Plus, it doesn't pose the annoying restriction of file character size, so you could just you could keep using it regardless of the um, length of the um, file name characters. Next, let's talk about browsers. 
um edge has come a long way with its updates but let's be honest most people still agree that the number one use case for microsoft edge is installing a different browser and in most cases this is usually google chrome that said i don't believe there is a one size fits all option when it comes to browsers your choice really depends on what you prioritize most in a browser so if privacy is at the top of your list i'll recommend you use LibreWolf or probably use Tor. I, I love using Tor a lot. LibreWolf is a Firefox-based browser that's fully open source and strips out all telemetry, trackers, and unnecessary bloat. Um, it also comes pre-configured with privacy-enhancing extensions and hardened settings, so you don't have to spend time tweaking it yourself. Tor, on the other hand, takes privacy to the next level by routing your traffic through multiple layers of encryption and bouncing it across a global network of servers. This makes it nearly impossible to track your online activity. You may click the card at the top right to watch my complete rating of privacy browsers. Now for speed, Torium is a fantastic option. It's based on Chromium but optimized to be lightweight and blazing fast. It cuts out unnecessary background processes and telemetry that often slow down the browsers, making it one of the fastest options out there. Plus, it's compatible with all Chrome extensions, so you don't have to sacrifice functionality for speed. Let's talk about an aesthetic feature in Windows 11, the dark mode. For some baffling reason, Microsoft hasn't built it in a way to automatically switch between light and dark modes. Basically, you select light or dark mode and use it the way Microsoft has pre-programmed it. Well, I recommend you try auto dark mode. It is simple, yet it's a brilliant app that improves on what Windows 11 already has. The beauty of this tool is how customizable it is. You can schedule mode changes based on the time of the day, or let it sync with um, Windows Night Light, adjusting automatically at sunrise and sunset. And if you want more control, it has hotkey support for quick toggling and even battery specific settings, so you can switch modes to save power when needed. What really makes this app shine is its flexibility. You can choose to apply dark mode to just Windows UI, just your apps or both. Whether you love it for its aesthetics or you simply want to enjoy it for its convenience, auto dark mode is the absolute must have. Now I'm going to combine two tools I love to use. But then let's talk about Windows Search. It's functional, but if you've ever waited more than a second for it to find a file, you know it's not exactly lightning fast. That's where everything search comes in. This tool is ridiculously quick. It indexes your entire drives in seconds and searching for the files feels instantaneous. I've used it to locate deeply buried documents and folders I forgot even existed and it never disappoints. But everything search is just the foundation. It is crude and you will not like the interface out of the box. So. What I recommend is pairing it with Flow Launcher. Flow Launcher adds a sleek, customizable interface that lets you search files, launch apps, run commands, and even perform um, web searches. I love that I can hit a hotkey, type a few letters, and instantly open an app or file without touching my mouse. It's like having Spotlight for Windows. One feature I use constantly is the plugin system. For example, I've set up a plugin that lets me search my browser bookmarks directly from Flu, from Flu Launcher. It's a small thing, but it saves me so much time. If you're someone who values speed and efficiency, then this combo is a no-brainer. I think I should have started with Power Toys because it's hands down the ultimate Windows 11 app. So, just yesterday, I ran into a situation where I needed it again. I was dealing with a computer that was auto-scrolling on its own. Turns out, it was just a keyboard malfunction. Now, I didn't have the time to troubleshoot and figure out how to fix the malfunctioning key. So, all I did was use PowerToys Keyboard Manager to disable the page up key. Problem solved just like that. But that's just scratching the surface. PowerToys is packed with features that replace and improve almost everything in the default Windows 11. 
Fancy Zone, for example, lets you create custom windows layouts so you can snap windows into place exactly how you want. Then there is the Power Rename tool, which lets you quickly rename multiple files at once with just a few clicks. And let's not forget the image resizer, which allows you to resize images directly from your right click menu. If you're into productivity, Power Toys also includes a shortcut guide helping you learn new Windows shortcuts and boosting your workflow. This is one tool that deserves a dedicated video and we have just the perfect one for you. You may click on the card on the top right to watch that video. Next, we move on to audio. Now, Windows 11 gives you some basic audio controls, but let's be real, it doesn't offer much room for tweaking or fine-tuning your sounds. If you're the type of person who likes to get into the details of your audio settings, FX Studio is exactly what you need. It comes with a super clean and minimalistic interface. So if you need to crank up that bass to feel the thump in your music or games, FX Studio lets you do it without the hassle of complicated settings. The best part is that it works as a separate audio source in your Windows sound outputs, so you can easily flip between FX Studio Sound's custom filters and the default Windows audio. It also offers a wide range of presets and customizable options to tweak everything from treble to vocals, giving you complete control over your sound profile. And if you want an immersive experience, the 3D surround feature is perfect for movies and gaming. The bottom line is that if you're serious about your audio experience and Windows 11's built-in option isn't really cutting it, FX Sound should easily take its place. Okay, so let's move to something very related. Windows comes with the default media player and honestly, it has evolved over the years, but I have never been a fan and I am still not a fan. And this is simply because there are much more capable media players out there. VLC is usually my go-to. It plays everything. I've thrown obscure video formats at it and it just works well. But I think what actually sets it aside are the little things. So for example, I love that I can adjust playback speed of videos. This is perfect for speeding through tutorials or slowing down action scenes. It also has built-in subtitle support. So if you're watching foreign films, you can easily load subtitles without fuss. But if you're into music, dopamine is one to try. It's lightweight, beautifully designed and perfect for managing a locally stored music collection. I've been using it to organize my library and it's just a joy to use. The interface is clean and intuitive and it supports all the major um, audio formats. One of the features I love is the now playing screen which displays album arts and track info in a minimalistic distraction free layout. For someone who is constantly moving files between a phone and a PC, Intel Unison is a sweet option. I've been using it to transfer photos, videos, and documents, and it's incredibly smooth. The setup is simple. Just pair your phone with your PC and you're good to go. No cables, no cloud services, no hassle at all. One feature that I've loved is the ability to send files from your phone to your computer with just a few taps. It's perfect for when I'm editing photos on my phone and I want to move them to my desktop for further work. Plus, it supports cross-platform transfers, so whether you're on an Android or an iOS, it just works. For folks coming from Windows 11, you're probably not a fan of the context menu in Windows 11. Well, Explorer, Patcher, and Nysoft Shell are what you need to fix this. I've been using Explorer Patcher to revert a lot of the UI back to Windows 10 style, and it's been a breath of fresh air. You get back the classic tax bar and even the old school start menu. It just feels familiar and very, very functional. But if you want even more control, Nice Soft Shell is fantastic. It lets you to customize the context menu to include all the options you're used to, like copy to, move to. I've set mine up to include shortcuts for common tasks like opening folders in command prompt or creating new text files. It's a small tweak, but it makes navigating Windows feel so much smoother. Next, we have one that should be used in place of CCleaner, and I have never been a fan of CCleaner. In fact, 
I think this is one of the tools you must avoid. Windows PC Manager is the modern alternative, but it also feels very native because it's owned by Microsoft. I've been using it to clean up my system, manage startup programs and optimize performance and it's been a huge help. One of its features that I love is the storage cleaner. It scans your, your system for junk files, temporary files and old updates and lets you clear them out with a single click. I freed up gigabytes of space using this tool and it's so much faster than manual hunting down files to delete. Another standout feature is the Startup Manager. It lets you to see which programs are set to launch at startup and disable the ones you don't need. I've used it to speed up my boot time significantly and it's so much easier to use than digging through the Tax Manager. It's the tool that keeps your system running smoothly without the bloatware of other tools. Now, I must mention a tool that I have spoken about a lot in the past. It's called WinGet. If you need to manage packages, installations, or updates, it must be your go-to on Windows 11. I have left it out of this video because I have talked about it in details in a dedicated video, so you might use the card on the top right to click and see that video. And that's as much as I share on this video. Please let me know in the comments if I have skipped any of the tools you love using, and if you've used any of the ones I've spoken about, please share your experience with them. Until the next video, stay safe.